<laughs> Hi folks, Doyle Docs here. Welcome to my Sunday string along. And it's so beautiful here today. My son Caleb said, you ought to call it your Sunday spring along and go outside and do it. Well, I wish I could, but everything's set up here today, but I hope you're having a good day. And I'll be string along today with my coffee and, uh, mm -hmm. and also a beautiful Olsen guitar. song I've never done before, especially for Layla Grace down in Florida, my granddaughter. Socks in the night when there's nobody there. What if they care all the lonely people? But do they all come from? Ah. Is passing by. Don't give up until you drink from the silver cup and ride that highway in the sky. This is for all the single people thinking that love has left you by. Don't give up until you drink from the silver cup and you'll never know until you try <laughs> and I'm on my way and I'm back to stay and I'm on my way back Up until you drink from the silver cup and give your heart to Jesus Christ. They actually change the words. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. Dan Peak of America actually changed the words. When he left the group, he went into more uh, ministry uh, in his life and was writing uh, songs about the Lord. And uh, I thought that was so cool. He changed the words of that. But uh, it's a great song. It really is. And uh, there's so many people that are, that are hurting in the world today. And uh, I, was, uh, I was reading. So this is not all of it here, but I can't believe it's you. I can't believe it's true. I needed you and you were there. I'll never leave. Why should I leave? I'd be a fool because if I, I, because I finally found someone who really cares. That part of that song, you know. You held my hand when it, when it was cold. When I was lost, you took me home. You gave me hope when I was at the end. You turned my lies back into truth again. And you even called me friend. You gave me strength to 
stand alone again to face the world out of my own again you put me high upon a pedestal so high that I could almost see eternity you needed me you needed me you know and people need us and they need to know that we care about them and I hadn't planned on singing any of that that was a beautiful song Ann Murray did that also Kenny Rogers Chet Atkins covered it of course Chet covered most everything didn't he he would have been a hundred years old this coming summer amen an amazing guy but I want to talk about caring you see I was, was a... oh Lord you're beautiful your face is all I see or when your eyes are on this child your grace abounds to me Oh Lord, you're beautiful Your face is all I see When in, when your eyes are on this child Which is all the time Your grace abounds to me For when your eyes are on child your grace abounds to me through it all through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Sing it. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. To depend upon His Word I've learned to depend upon His Word a beautiful song and uh, I love music I really do and, and I'm so thankful that we have that you know but not everybody has what we have they don't have the relationships that we have in our family they may not have a church relationship and uh, and people they may be hurting and yeah and uh, and so we just need to and you may not even know and maybe walking down the street see a homeless person but this is not just about that you know and it's not just about the lonely people that are out there, but it's about us. It's about you. I mean, lonely people, who cares? Well, we should, and we do. And it's commanded that we do care. But I first, let me say, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, say how much I appreciate you folks for uh, liking and subscribing to our, you know, a lot of people watch this, but maybe you haven't subscribed. All you gotta do is push a button. And also, if you can like, push the thumbs up, and also send it to someone, share share it with other people. And uh, so this is all about reaching people, and this this is uh, what the string along is really all about. And so, but I appreciate your support in other ways, actually, too. We have uh, a lot of the products, and I just had my <laughs> anyway. Still using this. Hmm. I need to move it out of the way here. Uh, let me see. We have some other. Uh, mugs and uh, uh, also fast fret <laughs> we have strings they have CDs you can buy the strings by the box that a lot of people are doing this you can buy them separate packs if you want to and all kinds of CDs and books and and polishing uh, guitar polishing guitar care uh, you know care <laughs> 
and also a fretboard conditioner or care for your fretboards on, on your guitar. And we sell uh, also uh, Shub Capos. We have those available on, on the site as well. And this is a kind that I use, kind of have on here on my Olsen right now. And, uh, and so anyway, we appreciate you uh, supporting us in that way. And it really is a blessing to us. Uh, I want to uh, actually, let's see, if I top of my head shop, folks, again. And uh, I, want, I want to share some things in the Word. This is in uh, Matthew chapter 5. And there are a lot of scriptures concerning this. I mean, caring for people. Who cares about people that are hurting? Well, God does. God cares. And he commands us that we also need to care and to reach out. And uh, not only to care within, but also care, you know, do things uh, in action. In verse 43 of Matthew chapter 5, you've heard it's been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say, love your enemies Bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use and persecute you. And uh, this was some of the most amazing things that people had never heard teaching like this before. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. You wonder why some people that aren't uh, good people are still seen to be blessed, you know. For if you love them which love you, what reward do you have? What reward have you? This is King James. Do not even the publicans do the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans do? Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So, as he has loved and reached out, he cares for those that are in need. He cares for the needy and he cares for the lonely, those that are hurting. Oh, look at all the lonely people, you know. Uh, you know, and also, uh, oh, look at all the lonely people. That was, a, that was actually a song uh, that was uh, talking about loneliness in the world and just focusing on that from the Beatles. Of course, it's a beautiful song. And uh, in the book, let's see, let's go to Romans chapter 12. And uh, Romans 12, oh, this is good stuff here. Verse, verse 10. And uh, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. And let's go to verse 14, verses 14. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. And uh, it sounds very similar to what Jesus said. This is in Romans. And also, uh, let's see, let's go to chapter 13, verses 7 and 8. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Uh, you know, uh, man, I would love to read this in, uh, in the NLT, if I may. And uh, this is really good. And uh, I actually was going to read this first. I, I, I just got my old Bible out that I used to, when I, years ago, I used to pastor a church. A lot of you don't know that, down in Florida. And, uh, and it says here in, in the NLT, give to everyone what you owe them. And this is tax week. Listen, pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. I love that. I mean, this is NLT, New Living Translation. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. Be obligated to the teachings of Jesus Christ and to what God has said. And there are many more. I mean, let's go to 1 John. Uh, I'll go back to the uh, King James Version. And 1 John uh, chapter 4, uh, let's see. This is verse 7 through 21. There's quite a few here. Um, Okay, I'll go ahead and read it. I don't want to take too much of your time today. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not is knoweth not God, for God is love. It's just not a characteristic of God. He is love. 
In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. And, uh, and it says, For, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. And that means complete, it is finished. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us his spirit, the Holy Spirit. So how do you love people that are not lovable? <laughs> how do you love people that are not lovely? Is because of, with the power of the Holy Spirit. For we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. I mean, look what Jesus did. He reached out and touched a leper. I mean, that was forbidden. And uh, that means you were unclean, and then he was going to have to be separated. I mean, if you know much about leprosy, he reached out to lepers in the Bible, and he healed them and cleansed them. Jesus healed uh, the blind uh, man. He healed blind people and people that were crippled. He reached out to them, fed those that were hungry. And we have known and believed the love of God that God has sent to us. God is love, and it says that again. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. And you're the only Jesus anybody else is ever going to see. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. Torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man's, that reminds me of my papa. He said, we used to have testimony night on Wednesday night church down in Springfield, Church of God, Jacksonville, Florida. And people would get up and say, I love him because, I said, why do you love him? And people said, well, I love him because he first loved me. And that's in the Bible. It's right here in 1 John. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out all fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. Amen. And you know, I, I, we and we're all we we're all working on this. As Uncle Arthur Blessed, an old man from Wales, used to come to my church. He says, "I'm not claiming, I'm aiming, right?" And uh, we're aiming for this. John Maxwell says the key to connecting with people is caring for people. The key to connecting with people. If you want to connect with people in your business, uh, if you want to connect with people. Uh, you know, in your new family, you know, that you're married into or whatever, or your church family or whatever, or on your job. The key to connecting with people is caring for people. If people know you care, and then he, I coined the phrase he said so many times, I think even President Roosevelt said this, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You know, uh, not to be bragging, but I tell you, I was, uh, uh, the Lord really blessed what I did when I was a clinician all those years with Taylor guitars and also Fender and Guild and uh, did some things with Gretsch, also uh, Godin guitars all over the world. I mean, I was in China, Australia, New Zealand, all over in Africa. I went all over the place. And there were times that we had hundreds of people at guitar clinics. And we would have these uh, clinician summits because they had like 11 other guys besides me. And they would ask me, well, how has yours been so successful? And uh, I mean, there were other guys that were very successful as well. I mean, there were, there were some really great musicians and all that. But I said, well, you know, and that I heard that from John Maxwell, who was Bob Taylor's pastor. Uh, Bob was on the board of their church there at the time. And when I met John Maxwell, the great, you know, uh, motivational speaker, he was a pastor at the time. And he said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I said, you know, I, I try everywhere I go, even with the guitar, 
to, uh, to encourage people to play and to invest in their music and invest in their kids and their grandkids and keep music alive and that their music is worth something. And they left with an attitude, this guy really cares. You know why? Because I do. You know, and I think the more you do that and the more you reach out to people, God puts that in your heart. It is a, a gift of the Holy Spirit. I mean, Paul didn't get this stuff on his own. Paul persecuted Christians and now he's reaching out to them. You know, he talked about bowels of compassion. Let me read this and uh, uh, thank you, Lord. I was about to forget that. And uh, Colossians, where is this? In Colossians chapter 3, Philippians, Ephesians, Colossians uh, chapter 3. 3 verse 12 and uh, he said put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness and long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another even if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave you so also do ye he talked about bowels of, of mercy and bowels of compassion and kindness and, you know, you ever felt that yearning and something in your gut, you get this gut feeling that your heart goes out to somebody or more than your heart, your blood pumper is, is in your bowels and uh, in your gut, actually. And, and Heidi and I were talking about this week, my daughter, she's a nurse anesthetist, you know, the white rose girl. And she said, well, dad, there's a connection between your bowels and your, and your brain, you know, and your nerves. And uh, that's why you, you know, sometimes your stomach, you can hear your stomach growl if you're nervous or if you get around somebody that you love and you care and you, you ask them out on the date. I remember the first time I asked Rita out on a date, you well, I just had that gut wrenching kind of thing, you know, because that's a natural thing. Well, Paul, I mean, he had that for people that were lost. God give us that for people that are lost, not just for our, ourselves, but to reach out. And, and God, only the Holy Spirit can give you that kind of compassion for people. And also mentions humility every single time he mentions humility. And there's more uh, along this line as well. And, uh, but he mentions bowels of mercies and bowels of compassion. And every time he talks about that, he talks about humility because humility is a part of caring. Let me go to H. Jackson Brown Jr. said, remember that children, marriage, and flower or flower gardens reflect the kind of care that they get. Children, marriage, marriages, and flower gardens reflect the kind of care that they get. Care, caring for people. Some people care too much, and I think it's called love. You know who said that? Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> which is A.A. A. Milne, actually. Uh, he visited a friend of mine, uh, and let me send out a shout out to them because I care for the, the Litton Cobbles. Henry Litton Cobbles' mother just passed away a few days ago, and uh, they own the Nebworth House. Look that up. But I played at Nebworth House uh, several times, and uh, it's an amazing place there. And A.A. Uh, A. Milne actually stayed in their home. Some people care too much. I think it's called love. I love that. Taking care is only one way to show your love. Another way is letting people take good care of you when you need it. Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers said that. The right mixture of caring and not caring. I suppose that's what love is. And James Hilton said that. Caring and not caring. That's when you're around your grandkids. You love them so much. Oh, I don't care. Just let them do what they're going to do. <laughs> care. The noun is a provision of what is necessary for the health and welfare, maintenance and protection of someone or something. The care, like the care, the care of the elderly. The care of the elderly. Or when you get a new guitar, it'll say care for, you, uh, for your guitar. Care instructions, it says. You know, also, uh, it means serious attention to do something correctly to avoid damage or risk. In other words, he took great care as he was polishing his guitar. He took, she took great care as she was cutting uh, her hair, you know, or, or he took great care uh, as he was performing surgery. He took great care, whatever it might be. You know, and, and so care, that's what it means as far as a noun, took great care. But the verb means to feel concern or interest, to attach importance to something or someone. Also to look after or provide for the needs of a person or, 
or an animal even. You care to provide care for your dog. You care for them. You, that's doing something. That's a verb. And that's what I want to really talk about here. Also, it means to look after, to provide for the needs of. Caring is an act of humility. E. Stanley Jones, which I have his, one of his old books right here. Oh, my Lord. Uh, uh, Abundant Living, E. Stanley Jones. I mean, look at that. That is a beautiful book. It's very old. I think out of the 40s. E. Stanley Jones, even my uh, friend David Cooper uh, sometimes will quote E. Stanley Jones. I heard about him from Pastor Drake years ago. Uh, Caring is an act of humility. E. Stanley Jones says, be so humble, be so humble that you cannot be humiliated. Isn't that beautiful? And, uh, and that means when you're reaching you, uh, to uh, reach out to somebody and to care for somebody, it's an act of humility. Remember what Leo Matheny said? He says, I don't allow anybody to hurt my feelings. You know, and it was an act of humility. He said, I don't think anybody's really ever hurt my feelings. And he says, I just refuse for that to happen. It's an act of, of humbleness and humility. Caring. Also, you know, and he gave in this book the, the illustration of these goats in the Andes Mountains. And when they would come to a narrow passage, one of the goats would kneel while the other one would crawl over him and walk over him. And, uh, and that's how they and got to safety and would crawl through this or work through this very narrow passage. Didn't have room for both of them. One would kneel and the other one would walk on, him, on, on top of him. And so uh, it, it takes a sense of, 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 you know, kneeling is a voluntary thing. It takes a sense of humility for somebody else to walk over you for their benefit. And so I say, Lord, help us to be in that place. Give us the heart where we will even sometimes allow people to walk over us for their benefit. And, you know, when you do that, and, and we all do that at times, but when you do that as unto the Lord, I believe God's going to bless you back for that. And we can obey Jesus' commandments to love your enemies like he said in the word and bless those that, uh, that uh, curse you, pray for those that mistreat you. Uh, that's obeying his word that's obeying doing what he says to do and we have an obligation obligation to that oh man no man nothing but only oh uh the lord what he said to love one another oh that uh, you know that, that should be a debt we should feel indebted uh to carry out the work of christ but the whole thing is is just not obeying do you really honestly care I mean, do you really care that people are hurting? When you pass somebody, does your heart go out? When you say, you know, how's it going or how are you doing? And, and they say, oh, I'm doing fine. How are you? That's kind of what we want to hear. But sometimes you'll say, how are you doing? And then they, they give you this instead of this. They give you this, you know, and, you're, and do, are you interested enough to really listen to what they're saying? I'm challenged on this myself. And again, I'm not claiming, I'm aiming. You know, you can ask my wife that. But, uh, but we should be so interested and in, uh, in humble ourselves to the place of where we'll, and, and take notice when people are saying things like this to you because they need somebody to hear. Maybe they need somebody to listen to. And you know, and they've been praying about this for a long time. King David said this in uh, Psalms 142. Look and see, there is no one at my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for my life. You see, he was focused uh, on the souls to, to take shelter in a cave. He was, or I'm sorry, he was, fo he was forced by Saul to take shelter in a cave. And he poured out his heart to God. So he was in that place. He said, no one cares for my life. No one cares for me. So how do you, how can you support somebody else if you don't care? You know, how can you teach somebody else, really, if you're a teacher or uh, whether there's Bible or if you're a school teacher? How can you teach someone else if you don't care? If you're a music teacher, how can you show, how can you honestly expect anybody to learn? And again, they don't care how much you know. You know, I, there have been pastors and preachers that get up and, and they'd, Man, they just preach over everybody's head, you know, but you could just kind of tell they were just trying to show off what they knew. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's the whole, if you want success in your ministry, care for people. If you want success in your business, 
show people that you care. If you're a doctor, you've got to care for people. I mean, how can you help somebody and uh, if you don't really care for them? How can you be a friend to somebody if you don't care? How can you be a witness to somebody if you don't care? How can you love someone else if you don't really care? So who cares? Well, God does, and Jesus does. And as I said, uh, how he reached out to so many people. In Hebrews 13, 16, and do not forget to do good and to share with others for such sacrifices God is well pleased. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, our own thing. You know, I know the Bible says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And how do you do that? Casting all of your care. The Amplified Bible says the whole, W-H-O-L-E, casting the whole of your care, your care, what you have inside, your anxiety, all of your anxieties, all of your worries on him, for he cares for you. And it says in Amplified, for he cares for you affectionately and he cares about you and he cares for you watchfully. And Lord, help us to do that with others. Help us to care affectionately as we cast our care on you. And we can't take the care of the world on us personally. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can love. By the power, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will put something on the inside, bowels of compassion. Give us a gut feeling this week when we pass somebody maybe on the street or when we pass someone or or someone's sharing something with us and it just... It just strikes us on the inside that I need to help this person and let us be there to help them. Use us. Help us to care more about what's going on in the world today, Lord, and and, uh, overseas with Israel and and the Middle East and and, uh, Russia and all the things in the world. Not getting political, Lord, you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We ask that you fix this stuff. We ask that you, Lord, be with those, especially of the household of faith. Be with them, protect them, help them today. And our heart goes to them. And we pray for them, Lord. And I pray for everyone that's been uh, watching and supporting and being a part of, of this channel. And, uh, and those that comment and those that don't, Lord, I pray that you will touch people in our string along family today. God, I pray in Jesus' name, and my heart goes out to them. There are people, Lord, that are hurting. They've, they've had prayer requests that they've posted. And we pray that you will answer every one of those needs and meet every one of those needs and answer their prayers. Meet every need, solve every problem. Oh, God, we just thank you for who you are. And, and Lord, give us strength to be more like you and wisdom to be more like you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. If there's anybody who hasn't received Christ, Lord, I just thank you uh, for receiving. As I receive you as Lord of my life, Lord, I pray that you will receive me as your servant. Lord, in Jesus' name, thank you. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. And when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. Your grace abounds to me. Amen. Well, folks, have a wonderful spring week, and I hope you'll have a successful week. Don't forget, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Thanks for joining me on my Sunday string along.